Hi there, this is Lily Birdsong and welcome to Queer Stories, where we talk about everything from novels, films, games, TV, and sometimes even current events. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most classic movies of all time, The Matrix. So some of you might be thinking, what's queer about The Matrix? Isn't it about this guy that falls in love with this girl and they're in some kind of virtual reality machine and then they escape and it's kung fu crazy sci-fi madness? Well, yes, it is that, but it's also an allegory for the transgender experience. So I'd like to take a little bit of a look back at the history of The Matrix because it seems like it came out just yesterday, but the reality is it actually came out in 1999. So it's been over 20 years since this movie came out. And if we think about the context and the time period of when the movie was made, at that time, being LGBT was not as well accepted as it is today. And I can say this just from personal experience, but everything will back that up. Of course, it's only 10 years after the AIDS epidemic was raging through America. So, so we know that there was a lot of anti-gay sentiment happening at that time. Um, but we also didn't have a lot of trans people that were represented in the media to show examples of that journey. The script itself was actually first presented to Warner Brothers as a part of a package of other scripts back in 1994. What you might find interesting is that they really went heavily into philosophy when they were writing the script. The script was written by the Wachowski siblings, and I'll go more into that in a moment. Um, but philosophy was heavily, heavily integrated into this script. And so cast members who were joining the, the crew actually had to, as a part of their acceptance onto the cast, had to do required readings. Some of the things they had to read was, as an example, they had to read French philosopher Jean Baudrillard's Simulacra and Simulation. They had to read Kevin Kelly's Out of Control, The New Biology of Machines, Social Systems, and the Economic World. And they also had to read Dylan Evans' theories or ideas about evolutionary psychology. So the film itself was written and directed by the Wachowski siblings, which at the time were known as the Wachowski brothers. One thing that you may not know is that years later, both of them came out as transgender. The first one to come out as transgender was Lana. She started transitioning, or rumors that she started transitioning, started to spread in the early 2000s. So this was after The Matrix was already out. They kept denying the rumors, you know, nobody was talking about what was going on, and the Wachowski siblings were recluses. They really did not go out in society much. They kept to themselves and so they had this air of mystery about them. And so because they never went out in society, it was a little bit easier for them to hide their transition. Rumors of her transition were denied all the way up until 2008 when she completed her transition. As of 2010, newspapers and magazines started to refer to her as Lana. It wasn't until 2012 that she actually appeared in public for the first time. And she appeared in public when she was accepting an award with the Human Rights Campaign for visibility. So I'd like to read to you a few of her words that she said. There are some things that we do for ourselves, but there are some things that we do for others. I am here because when I was young, I wanted very badly to be a writer. I wanted to be a filmmaker but I couldn't find anyone like me in the world, and it felt like my dreams were foreclosed simply because my gender was less typical than others. If I can be that person for someone else, then the sacrifice of my private civic life may have value. So interestingly enough, it was only years later in 2016 that her sister Lily came out as transgender as well. And here are some of Lily's words. I am one of the lucky ones. Having the support of my family and the means to afford doctors and therapists has given me the chance to actually survive this process. Transgender people without support, means, and privilege do not have this luxury, and many do not survive. She first appeared in public in 2016 at the GLAAD Media Awards, where she accepted an award for the Netflix series Sense8. So now that you know a little bit about the personal journey of the writers and directors of the film, it might not be as surprising to you to find out that there were some elements that were inspired by that journey when they wrote the script. I imagine that right now you're feeling 
a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole, hmm? You could say that. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Do you believe in fate, Neil? No. Why not? Because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. <sighs> Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So the first concept is just the idea of the matrix itself. It is described as a splinter of the mind a sense that something is fundamentally wrong with the world, but not really understanding why. So this concept itself is an allegory for gender dysphoria, that feeling of knowing that something is not right. And then to escape the matrix, what do you do? You take a pill. So this pill can represent taking hormones. And once you take the hormones, you wake up and you're in your original body that you're meant to be in. You're in the physical universe. So this whole journey of dysphoria to taking the pill to waking up in a new world is an allegory for that transgender experience. Interestingly enough, there was also a character that was in the original script who made it into the movie, the character Switch. But Switch in the original script was a woman in the Matrix and a man in the real world. And what happened was the studio executives did not agree with this, and so they asked for that portion to be removed. This isn't terribly unusual. This happens sometimes. So what happens when a script is written is you write the script and you shop it around to studios to try and get somebody to fund you to make it. So let's say a studio like Warner Brothers picks up your script. They are providing all the money for you to go out and shoot the film, 
but they might have some issues that they want to resolve. They might want to change things here or there in the script. And if you don't do that, then they can take the funding away. So there sometimes is a bit of a fight that happens between the director and the studio funding the project in terms of some specific elements of the film that they don't agree with. So at the time, The Matrix did have some elements that were cut out of it that were a little bit more explicitly transgender. And we kind of laugh at that today, right? We go like, oh, it would be not a big deal at all if Switch was represented as a woman in The Matrix and a man in the real world. That would be like a non-issue if that were in the movie today. But at the time, it was a bit too too far. So Lily Wachowski was actually interviewed, and you can see the link to this. I'll put it in the description on the Netflix channel. Uh, was interviewed about The Matrix. And some of the things that she said was that it was this desire for transformation that they wanted to express, but they had to express it from a closeted point of view. I'm glad that people are talking about the movies, um, the Matrix movies, uh, with a trans narrative. I love that, so, uh, the, how, um, how meaningful those films are to trans people and the way that they come up to me and say, this, these movies saved my life because when you talk about transformation, specifically in the world of science fiction, which is just about imagination, it's like, and world building and like the idea of the Im seemingly impossible becoming possible, I think is like, that's why it speaks to them. The whole concept of the matrix was a concept of transformation. I personally take this to mean that we as human beings are more than just the bodies that we are born in. And the medium of science fiction and fantasy is so interesting, both to me and to the Wachowskis, because it gives you the opportunity to create a brand new world from scratch. And so you can do whatever you want in this world. So this is part of the reason, I think, why people like me that like to explore with queer stories love to do such explorations through science fiction and fantasy. So I can relate to this a lot. So if we look back at this film 20 years later, what can we say about it? I think we can say that the interpretation of art is not static. This is something that Lily said, that when we are experiencing art, we can experience it in a non-linear fashion. We can circle back to art over and over again, and we can see different things in it at different moments in time, depending on our experiences and our worldview in those moments. And I think if we were going to see a movie like The Matrix being written today, those types of elements would not be written out of the script. And I'm actually curious to see, because they are making the fourth Matrix movie right now, if you didn't know that. So um, I'm actually curious to see if they do decide to bring some of those elements into the fourth movie. Keanu Reeves was also interviewed about this to ask whether he knew about these elements of the script when he was filming the original Matrix movies. And he said that he did not. It was not something that Lily and Lana shared with him um, as a part of the overt journey that they took as cast members. But he's very supportive of them. And obviously he's continuing to contribute to the fourth Matrix movie, which he's filming right now and is directed by Lana. Unfortunately, Lily is not working on this particular film because she's on a different project right now. But um, I think it is something that the cast members are all very supportive of. So in summary, I think it's really interesting to see how when we look back at a film 20 years later, depending on our world context, sometimes that we can see different things or we can understand different things. I also think that you should know that there are some other works by the Wachowskis that you would probably really enjoy. And uh, maybe I'll go over them in different videos. Uh, one of them is V for Vendetta. And I absolutely love V for Vendetta. It is a sort of satire on fascist society and what happens when you lock down the society and you make things like being gay illegal. It's all told through the story of this character that is a superhero and it's based on a graphic novel. If you haven't seen V for Vendetta, I highly, highly recommend it. And it's also directed by the Wachowskis. And then another show that I mentioned earlier in the video is Sense8. So Sense8 is a Netflix TV show and it has a lot of different queer elements in it and it includes transgender characters, it includes lesbian and gay characters, 
And the, the premise is a little bit difficult to describe, but basically there's this group of eight people that are telepathically connected. And then there's this sort of, you know, mystery crime, um, conspiracy theory kind of thing that they're trying to work out. And uh, what's really interesting to me is that um, this is one of those examples of a transgender character that's played by a transgender woman. And she's absolutely amazing. So if you haven't seen Sense8, I also highly recommend it. This series has completed now, so you can watch the whole thing. Um, and it is an award-winning series, so it's really worth a good look. Also, one interesting little tidbit that you might not know about The Matrix is, did you know that uh, the role of Neo was actually offered to Will Smith first? And he turned down The Matrix to do Wild Wild West? Yep, that happened. Um, if you want to find out more about that, I'll put the link for that in the description. Will Smith made his own video about it, which is really funny. So definitely have a look at that. So thank you so much. That's it for today. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like this video. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. You can also subscribe to me on Patreon if you want to support more content like this being created in the future. All right, so today I present to you guys Tiny Cat. Say hi, Tiny Cat. She is um, trying to participate in this video. She keeps trying to kiss me, rub her nose against my hand, but I'm like, I need to record this video. Right, Tiny? All right, so I'm going to be interviewing Tiny Cat now. What do you think about The Matrix as an allegory for trans experiences? Hmm? Do you think that's valid? I think that's a kiss and a headbutt. And that probably means yes. <laughs> okay. She just wants a hug. Sometimes everyone just needs a hug. <laughs>